I'd like to call to order the regularly scheduled design review board meeting for Monday, June 5th, 2023. Of course, we start with roll call. Harley Gardo Rice. Here. Anka Dragulski. Here. Elaine Lang. Here. <laughs> and Jolene Urban. Here. Here. All right. Um, with that, we've established a form. I would like to to reverse order for one item that I think we're going to spend significantly less time than anything else. Um, with that being said, is it okay, George? I'm sorry. Is it, do we go with um, the spoonful of bourbon applicant first, and then we'll do the Brad Bros Hot Meadow LLC? Yeah, you know, I would move either spoonful way. Of I moved them right underneath um, the first the old business item. Okay, so that's right, and that would be the two easiest. I suspect. Can I you make a motion to yeah. that. I get a motion to just make that change. I make a motion we move the zoning compliance review of Tom Ryan, owner of Spoonful Britain, applicant to uh, the top of new business. Second. Okay, uh, you're hearing nobody. In opposition, we can just pass it, right? Yeah. Okay. So, with that being said, application ZC 23 02 of Brad Bros Hot Meadow LLC owner for a 21 square foot plus or minus wall sign at 730 Hot Meadow Street. Is somebody here on behalf of the applicant? Could you give us a brief overview of what's changed and any uh, other comments you might have on it, please? Uh, Mr. Chair, if you can have him come up, if we can get them. Oh, yeah. So the owl can see you. Okay. So start with your name and association, and then give us the overview. Please. Yeah, my name is John Grad. I'm the owner of Right Step Mortgage. Um, so we're here for uh, a sign on the side of our building. And uh, we feel that aesthetically it deals with the likeness of town. Uh, we, my, Marketing person came up with a couple different concepts. It's it's the same size and shape, essentially, of the existing sign there already. Uh, it would uh, uh, go right below that existing sign there for a journey of yoga. So same lane, same width. A um, couple different design concepts with different color variations. So, Mr. Chairman, if you remember, a member of the commission. You were these folks were running six months or yeah, well, that, was the, that. that was the initial. So you came in with the initial, and your comments were could you uh, provide a shape that's a little closer to the yoga? Um, mm -hmm. Could you consider dark background um, and, and a potential border with that dark so background? We made those changes. So then we came back really with, with the three options, the four options so here. We're choosing, you're choosing from one of these? One of the four. Okay. Do you have a preference? Uh, we were thinking either the the blue on white or the red on white. So, so it's a red. So the two with the That's a, uh, far right. Bur uh, burgundy. Yeah. Do so you have a, you have sample chips? Colors chips? I don't. Have, it would be the same burgundy that's that's there on some on the existing sign. The journey to yoga sign. The journey to yoga. Okay. But if you look at the front of the building, there's an all state sign that has a similar blue. A very dark blue. Dark navy blue. So you don't have a picture of that. Uh, you have a picture of the front. I bet you could figure that out. So while you're doing that, ultimately, <laughs> is your preference the maroon or the blue? Uh, we we're undecided between the maroon and the and the, and the blue. So we've really got a pivotal role here. <laughs> <laughs> so there's also an awning on the uh, east side of the building. What the, color is that? The awnings are are red. Uh, okay. The red burgundy. Okay. Could you? Okay, then. That's like the burgundy. The journey to you is perfect. Um, so this is the uh, same series on two right now. Yeah, kind of just blends. I mean, our preference is probably we're leaning towards the, the blue. I mean, I have to turn, yeah. I presentation up here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What with the white lettering? Yeah, the blue with the white. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, color, the colored lettering is very hard to read. Yeah. But um uh, here we go. Yeah. So the all state tier, you want to go around back? Yeah. We can see, see right that's, that's the, the other side. 
We're gonna have some red and green on it. Yeah, and the signs on Hot Meadow were the more like the navy. So that's been replaced. We replaced our awning, yes. Okay, because that says something different. That was uh, a Valley old. Credit Union. Okay, that's that's, that's gone. That's an old picture. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And then... Oh, oh I see the there's a mix on the front. The front there's a green, there's a blue. Yeah. There's a mixed yeah. palette. So yeah. yeah. So so green. this this blue looks like it would match kind of be some, very similar to that all state no. design. Correct. And it makes it distinctive um, from the journey to yoga sign, and not just look the same mm -hmm. with the burgundy. Okay. Is there a border on that sign? Do you know, or is it just um, plus to the edge? Uh, this is just a concept, so it's, it's what you see is kind of what you get. It says border in the, in the mock up. But is there a border? Light gray was, I think, the description. Uh, white logo and border on navy, and white logo and border on burgundy is what the nice. captions say in the, in the mock up. The thin gray border was not. Yeah, I think the white will one. make it distinctive away from the, the edge of the building, or the, yeah. the color of the building. This the shape, the shape and size is a lot more pleasing to the eye than, than that thin strip that we saw before. So, Jillian, do you have any questions on that? Okay. Um, I, I wondered about a border. Um, I'm fine with either the navy or the red. Um, and it looks like there's a shadow border. Um, I just wanted to call out maybe a believer's needed. It's got a thin gray board. Oh, white. Okay. The gray one is on the colored lettering. Oh, yeah, okay, that's so what I'm seeing in, in the shadow. In the um, oh, I see what you're handout, saying. there's right. pictures right. of what the side of the building looks like with the other. Yeah. Are you able to maneuver? I mean, yeah. Just just the one it's the little thing that says kind of that finger and it wants to keep. Okay, so that. moving along, Holly, do you have any additional questions of the applicant? No questions, but I like the navy with the, the, the light gray border. No, it's a white border on the navy. I was corrected. Oh, it's white? That's yeah. fine. I thought it was gray, but I'm, I'm, I'm good with that one. I think it looks best than going with the maroon that matches the journey. It makes it more distinctive. Is a little uh, differentiation. Differentiation there. Okay. <laughs> Good enunciation. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Do you have any questions or comments for that? Uh, no, I agree with Polly. The the navy background is fine. Uh, just I, I like option two here on on the presentation on the. When she's pointing to the blue, she yes. likes to look yep. for it. Just just one note. Uh, be aware that um, if you add too much white border, uh, the sign will look smaller than the one above, than the yoga. So it should be a bit of a white border if you so wish to pop it out, but don't make it too white because then too wide you mean too white yeah because then the, the your your uh, blue uh, sign will look uh, smaller than the one above. I mean much smaller. Other than that, it's fine. Maybe later. So you guys are saying maybe well, with the white lettering? Maybe with the white lettering, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that is my favorite as well. I don't think you need to match the burgundy, although I don't think the burgundy would be unattractive. I think the colored letters are very hard to read. So just, you know, for your marketing sake, I would go with the white letters. Um, but I, I do like the new kind of shape and size you've got working there. And, you know, I, I think the, the blue, if I were picking, that would be the one that I would pick, but they look, they look nice. They look it's my marketing, it's Farrell's favorite. Yeah. Uh, Jolene, back to you. Did you have any additional questions or comments for that? Yeah, I, I like um, either the red or the blue. And... But I, I agree uh, with Elaine that the lettering is better <clears throat> all in color. Okay, great. I also favor for the blue. So with that being said, I'd like to make a motion for a positive referral regarding application CC 23-02 of Grad Burroughs Hot Meadow 
LLC owner for a 21 square foot plus or minus at 730 Hot Meadow Street with the additional acknowledgement that the blue color and reverse lettering is favored with a thin white border. Would someone like to second that motion? I will. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. So thank you for your time and efforts. We appreciate yeah. it. All right. Thank you. So just to be clear, it's, it's that. Is that it's the blue? Or? Well, it was the so, blue with reverse it's, lettering. It's, it's our favorite. Yeah. That's okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Thank well, you, you didn't that. disclose that, but I'm <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's kind of leaning towards the red, but <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Were crooked. <laughs> Okay, with that being said, we have agreed to reverse order and now bring on zoning compliance review of Tom Ryan, the owner, Spoonful of Britain applicant for 160 square foot plus or minus wall sign at 914 Hop Meadow Street. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> if you please, one of you step to the podium or both of you are welcome to come up, state your name. Another the podium's over there. So basically, just tell us who you are and a quick overview of the sign and any details you might want to add. I'm, I'm Carly Keith. I'm Natalie Brown, and we are co owners of Spoon for Britain. Um, this sign would be replacing um, an existing sign that's not right there now, but the shape of it was there, so we know the sizes. It has the raised dimension of lettering that uh, fits in with the um, Complementary to all the other signs that are on that device, um, and it's been made by the lady that makes most of those signs as well. All right, so let's start by um, just for reference, Mr. Chair. That's kind of the, that's the type of sign that, that it's going to match. Yeah, it happens. It seems very shiny. Yeah. All right, great. So with that, Paula, you want to start with any questions or comments? I have no questions comments? or comments. It looks great, and I know it'll be. Um, in keeping with the rest of the signs in the building. So well done. Thank you. Anka, are you ready to, for any questions or comments you might have? I, I like it, uh, but just probably because, again, my, my impression right now, it's a bit too shy. The, the font, are you sure you don't want it a bit bolder? Uh, do you think it should be? Uh, that, that's the font we have on all our logos okay. and everything. So okay. that's the, the blue is quite vibrant. It yeah, it's just not really popping. Pop yeah, 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 it looks, yeah. yeah, it does. It pops. Yeah, the blue is really definitely it. a bit bolder. You're comfortable with how yeah. much it pops, then it's okay. Yeah. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Elaine. It looks great to me. I'm relieved because I drove by your old location and we weren't there anymore. And I was like really upset. <laughs> I'm glad that you're opening up in a, in a new location. Yes. I'll be back. <laughs> and Jolene. I, I love it too. And uh, looking forward to tea. Thank you. Thank you. All right. With that being said, I also uh, and fond of the proposed thing and impressed that's not in the notebook. So great project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. It was so embarrassing. Yes. Zoom, okay. It was COVID times. Um George, do we do a positive referral in this scenario? It's obviously yeah, you do, you do, uh, essentially the positive referral is to staff, but yeah, you would you, you would get a, I would get a motion. Okay, does someone else want to do it? I'd be happy to do it. Uh, go. Oh, um, so I I motion that um, we accept with a positive referral the application, <clears throat> the zoning compliance review of Tom Ryan, owner, Spoonful of Britain, applicant for a 160 square foot wall sign at 914 Hot Meadow Street. Um, this is a hazard map H09 block 227. Lot 002-2L, then SC1. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. With that, we'll move right along to... Hold on. I think I would say since you're at it, I, I would go ahead and, and, and maybe work on CC 2321, the... Uh, the, the liquor store okay. sign at, at Drake Hill. Again, right, that's very good. Signage out of the way. So, next, we'd like to call up application ZC 23 21 of GPF Drake Hill LLC owner Naraj Gupta, applicant for a 25 plus or minus square foot wall sign and a 
two square foot plus or minus freestanding insert at 710 Hot Meadow Street, also known as 712 Hot Meadow Street, um, associated with a special exception pursuant to section 8.6 of the cemetery regulations to permit a 1,187 square foot liquor store in Simsbury Center zone, better known to us as Draco Mall or you know, whatever it's called. Hi, how are you? Can you please state your name and um, give us a brief overview? Uh, my name is Niraj Gupta. Um, I'm owner of Harvest uh, Wine and Spirits. Um, we'd be opening a new store next to the grocery store. Um, in this case, the landlord had um, said, I guess the um, what's going on in the plaza, it's all black and white predominantly. So they wanted to keep it that way. Normally we have much more color, burgundy and really rich, but it just didn't fit the criteria. So they said to go black and white. So as well as the town when we spoke with them. So that's what we did. So our that sign is the one that goes above the store. It's 12 and a half by two feet following suit as to what is pre-existing. And then there's a second sign that follows suit on the pylon. And that one, we would simply be replacing the bats and sign that I think is 10 and a half inches by 18 inches with the same black um, lettering. So no, just recycle the same material and then with black letter. So just for clarification, because the slides sort of contradicted, we're going with black, not dark green lettering. It's not a big deal to us, but just- Yeah, that should be black lettering. Okay. Well, yeah, that's all black. The other black. sign. The other well, slide said dark green. That's okay. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Black. I chair. Dark dark green. Green accepted. Black and cream have been approved as alternatives by this body. So it's, it's definitely <laughs> oh, we didn't. So this might be dominant. what's pre existing maybe on the yeah. plaza. Okay. But we're black and Unified white. sign plan says dark green with white. That's oh, great. We have approved yeah. black. Okay. Lions, lion stand. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, green, 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 green is gone. We know that. TD. That's gone. Yeah, yeah. That's gone. I don't yeah. have a yeah. Updated. I want to know what a beer cave is, but that's the second point. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the man cave, a little deeper in. <laughs> <laughs> I hope women are invited to. <laughs> Touche. Good point. Um, <laughs> Oh, we might as well start with you. I think mean, it's for the applicant. Yeah, I think your sign looks terrific, and I think it's going to be a nice addition to the plaza. So I'm I'm good with everything on your signage. For sure. I'll you don't mind. Agree. No comments. Alay. I I like it. It comes with an order. Polly Polly didn't even have to. I know that order in my usual right. I know. So it looks great. Good location. Driving my car after doing this so. I thought yeah. that was at the library. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Putting life on the edge. Sorry, <laughs> Jolene. I agree. I, I like the sun very much. Thank you. I also like it as presented. With that being made, who would, with that being said, would someone else like to make the positive referral? Um, make a positive referral for application ZC 23-21, um, uh, GPF Drake Hill LLC, owner, Neuraj Gupta, applicant for a wall sign and freestanding insert at 710 Hot Meadow Street, aka 712 Hot Meadow Street, associated with a special exception pursuant to section 8.6 of the Century Zoning Regulations to permit a... 11 inch hundred square foot picture store in the Simsbury Center zone. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you for your time and good luck. We appreciate, we appreciate it. it. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, so, George, Sorry. as long as you're giving me a little hints here, that's okay. Well, where would you hint we go next? <laughs> okay, let's. Um, I would suggest you do the, the Dorset Crossing. Let's just do that. I was just going to say that. Um, so just, if you take, give me one second. Yep. So the reason, the reason the Dorset Crossing application is in front of you is that this is during um, the what we call the preliminary review process for a property that is zoned planned area development. So because this property is zoned planned area development and the applicant is in proposing a significant change, the zoning regs say it should be reviewed preliminarily by design review, by the planning commission, and by conservation commission. 
And then uh, once the Zoning Commission schedules the full public hearing on the master plan change, we would come back if there were any changes um, that the applicant made based on your comments, zoning comments, those kinds of things. The only curveball here is that because, the, because we're changing the master plan, the conceptual design, don't really have elevations, don't really have a landscaping plan yet. The applicant hasn't gotten to that. So the comments would typically be more broad. What 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 would a design review board like to see at this location in terms of design after the applicant kind of walks you through what they're planning to do? And with that being said, is someone here to present on behalf of Doris Across? You could just state your name and association. Sure. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Dave Zyacks. I'm a professional engineer with FA Hesed Associates. We're located next door in East Granby. Uh, Tom Fahey, an attorney for the applicant, is here as well this evening. Um, we've been working, I have been working on this site since 2004. <laughs> My job number is 04174. <laughs> and we've been before this commission for various uh you know as the buildings have been developed on the property we've been working closely with the with the design review board on on buildings as they've come forward so as george pointed out this is a, a little different twist here in that we're coming to see you on a preliminary basis without a real building um we have conceptual site plans so that we can see massing for what we're doing and things of that nature but um uh, you know i don't have anything uh like we would typically do, like for instance, when we worked on uh, lots D and G here last year, we did it virtually because we couldn't see each other in person at the time. But uh, but we worked closely together then, came back to several times, you know, working on the design. And I would expect the same thing here once we have a real building to talk about signage and of that nature. So maybe George, could you put up um, one of our slides there for the front? Yeah, this is currently what the master plan is uh, that's approved. Uh, it has uh, in the front there, um, actually, are your, is, yeah, is that working? It is. There you go. I think my red one won't work on this. It might because this is a pull down screen. It doesn't work very well on LED screens. But what we're focusing on this evening is this front portion of the site. This is uh, Route 10, Hot Metal Street here. Uh, this is Dorset Crossing Drive, which is now Town Road. It was built and then approved. Uh, this is the apartment uh, in, located in the center here. There's 168 units there, fully occupied. This was the special needs housing we worked on, which is 48, 48 units located up in this area. And then this is the, uh, the two apartment buildings that were approved last year, uh, 72 uh, units all together. Um, we're hoping construction starts on that pretty quickly. They've been bogged down a little bit, like everybody with financing terms and things of that nature, but they're hoping to get going on that pretty soon. Um, what we did uh, with the planning commission uh, is we reconfigured um, these three lots in the front here to create an A, an F, and an H lot. And that was because this building here is the only thing that's in the front. It's 15,000 square foot single story medical building that was built. Uh, by uh, Tony Giorgio and Dorset Crossing. Now, uh, that's 10 years now since that building's been there. And uh, it's currently only about 25% occupied because St. Francis Medical Center was going to take the whole building at one time. And through their marketing changes in, uh, in this area, the north end of Simsbury, uh, they basically backed out of that uh, over the years. So this building's only 20, 25% occupied. Uh, these the rest of these buildings, one, two, three, four, were never constructed. Actually, five was a good one right there. Uh, when we did this, uh, this whole this building was specifically set up for a Walgreens because Walgreens Walgreens was if you can get a traffic light, and get the master plan approved, we'll be there in six months. Well, here we are, ten years later, and they have no intentions of coming up into this this market. So uh, that that corner has to change anyhow because that's that is a Walgreens with a drive-through that we all know we've seen a thousand of them. Uh, so that that design has to change anyhow. So uh, what we're proposing is to uh, take these four buildings um, out of the master plan and reconfigure this lot here to something that um, you know meets the current marketing needs for a some form of a small office or retail on this corner 
And then we're also asking to change the use of this building from just purely medical to medical retail, because we think we have a better chance at filling this building up if we can put in some retail uses in this building here. Maybe George, go to the next slide that we have. Yeah, so this is this is would be the proposed master plan. What we would do is split that large building up into two smaller buildings, um, change this use here from pure medical to medical retail, and then introduce 72 units of housing on the slot here. And this current layout has three three apartment buildings, uh, 24 units apiece with a you know common area where the swimming pool might be located in community building, but sort of a good tight preliminary layout, but may not be what you see, you know, down the road as, as it develops. But for our massing purposes, you know, how many units can we comfortably fit, parking, things of that nature. How many stories? They, these would be three-story buildings, three, three uh, conventional sort of, uh, you know, uh, garden, call them garden style apartments. Um, they're actually, almost this exact unit is, is under construction about four or five miles up the road in Granby right now, so. I like the size of this building. So that's why we chose to use it for our conceptual purposes. Um, but again, it's a conceptual site plan. You know, what type of unit uh, mix would come back at 72 units? Um, that would be, you know, the next step after we get the master plan um, redone. So that's basically what it would be. And again, this is lot H, F, H is where the housing units would be. A is where that medical existing medical building would be on that, and then lot F here in the front. Not that the lots really matter that much because it's all it's all going to be integrated and you know with cross easements and things of that nature for parking and for pedestrian access. So the lots are really, really for financial purposes and not really mean anything from a, an overall planning point of view. Um, we have had we went before the uh, zoning commission informally back last month and got some comments back from them and you, you saw your comments through through staff through George from the planning commission um, the idea of introducing some affordable component to this new project here and what we're going to be proposing is 10% uh, affordable units uh, in compliance with the state statute and we'll, we have to work that out with staff to get all the language the right way as a condition of approval, um, but that's what we've been looking to do is go right ahead and introduce this 10% affordability rather than getting into a long discussion and negotiations and whatever else you want to call it. So this project would have a 10% component to it. And that's really where we are uh, from a uh, traffic point of view, it works out well. It's actually, this will actually generate less traffic than the retail that we, were, that we would be replacing. We install the traffic light at Dorset Crossing Drive. So that's really, traffic is really not a consideration. Water and sewer and things of that nature are all um, available for, uh, for this type of development, so. I have a question on the traffic. On the bigger map, it shows the continuation of the rotary yeah. connecting to Hot Meadow with that. Is that? That wouldn't be part of our plan. Uh, we set up Dorset Crossing to allow that to occur by putting the rotary or mini roundabout, if you want yeah. to call it that. And connecting to uh, the Yeah, there's an overall plan that's still floating around that takes you, you know, from Route 10 through our site, which would now take you through giant solar panel fields. No, 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 but I'm just talking about the connection from the rotary east to Colorado. Yeah, no, that would not be part of this proposal, okay. but it's set up so that that could happen. In the event of the Valley Solar or whatever it's called now, they own that piece. Oh, so, okay. yeah, so it's probably not six. Well, it will in no. 15 years. Part of our agreement is we'll sell it to the town for a buck. So, in 16 years, there's a high likelihood that the planning yeah, part right. of the, the yeah. POCD that will come to fruition, but that's. Yep. 16 years away. We'll talk about it then. <laughs> I hope so. Well, it goes by fast. We've been here since 2004. So, uh, <laughs> and it's 19 years ago. <laughs> go by really fast but that's where we are and we'll hope that you folks will uh, um, support us in this move to i mean uh dr giorgio if he was here today we would have to listen to him tell us how he has tried everything that he could possibly do and 
using just about every commercial realtor in the valley to try to market this thing to, to move forward with the original master plan. That's really what we wanted to do. And uh, what, what are your plans for the small square uh, building in the lower half? Uh, right now, I, I've set it up conceptually for two nice small tenants that, that could now be attractive to this area. So commercial. Commer definitely commercial. Yeah. Yeah, definitely commercial. I just broke the, the big Walgreens building up because that's just not going to happen. What's your um, net square footage comparison to what is pre-approved, if you will, versus what you're approved? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, well, we have, we're going from, we had 74,000 square feet of commercial approved, and we're dropping that down to 27,000. And then we have the three buildings at maybe... And say 10,000 square feet a piece footprint. So that would be 30,000. So 30 plus 27, we're still below the original 74,000. Yeah. 37. Yeah. Those and apartments are probably around 10,000, 11,000. And impervious surface is about the same. It would be almost, I think it will be less because that, that uh, was a large parking area there. Might be a little bit less. And so is this be, will it be marketed as an, a new complex or part of the existing Dorset's Crossing complex? Oh, it's everything's tied together. It's almost like a condo, you know, because everything's tied together between utilities, drainage, um, the pedestrian sidewalk systems. So it's all going to be, you know, to, to you going there later, you don't, you won't, you don't have any concept of property lines or anything like that. Okay. Just and the green there. space, you said a pool, and there'll be because I know the other Dorset, there's uh, like, a, like a community room or something like that. I think there's a um, yeah, there's a community yeah. center yeah. building, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you kind of replicate pretty all much, you need that, the, I mean, yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You need that, so yeah. So that's why space. we got this area over here, you know, whether that's a uh, it will definitely be a community building, but whether it's a pool or maybe some just more uh, less aggressive. Uh, some th there's a lot of feeling back and forth between pools and no pools. Uh, I think the pools are more from a marketing point of yeah. view than they are anything else because we can only swim for three months out of right. the year. Green space. Yeah, I mean, definitely green space. Maybe a dog park was really popular now. And then the mail drop off area is a big deal these days. Um, so uh, that's why we're, we're benches and stuff like that. Oh yeah. To sit outside. Yeah. Right and again, we'll you know. On future nights, we'll work all those details out yeah. together, okay. you know. But you can see here, I got the sidewalks tied into here. And then this is right, this sidewalk exists already all the way through. And the good news is there's sidewalks going in up and down Route 10 finally yeah. after all these years. Right. So here, you know, if you on a nice day, you can ride your bike or walk down to Big Y or some of the other things that are coming up down at that end. Folks are gonna be looking at some of that later tonight. So. Plus, all the existing things across the street, my favorite breakfast shops across the street are so uh, you could walk right over there. And not to say you feel there's a, you already have two very large approved buildings on yeah. this lot. Cemetery At some very point, we don't place. want another empty, you know, apartment building. You know, so no, yeah. Any empty yeah, there's um. There aren't going to be too many empty apartment buildings anywhere these days. So, uh, that, you know, there's a lot of interest. Simsbury is very attractive. And, um, you know, that's that's where we are. You know, it's, at ten, 10 years ago or so, everybody thought these little mixed-use things was going to be a great idea. That's why we went through the effort to do it all. And a lot of energy has been expended to, to pull that off. Because originally, I mean, this was going to be two 15,000-square-foot medical buildings. And then a Walgreens, and then a bunch of other little things around it, and that was that was the excitement at the time. And they went ahead and built this building right off the bat, and had it pretty well leased out to, to um, um, St. Francis as a you know medical center, and um, things have just changed. Times have changed, and. I, I still can't believe the Walgreens didn't go there. I mean, when you saw the meetings I was at, it was like, you know, when can we start this thing? You know, <laughs> in all fairness, they dissolved their entire real estate. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it was totally bizarre. So it was just like they just, it just like disappeared. Like it wasn't you? It was the whole country. 
Um, so bringing it back to our DRV purview, we're always looking for taking cues from the neighborhood as well as um, neighboring properties. With that being said, we asked Big Y to bring in, um, what's that stone? Sandstone. Thank you. <laughs> Someday I'll know it automatically, but um, bring in sandstone cues if you're doing any uh, mm -hmm. firms or anything. Um, also from a personal speaking only for me, not on behalf of the board, I wouldn't want to bring the Dorset Crossing bright white blob up to the, the curbside. Uh, there's no differentiation in color, as you know, on the existing structure. I, I know you don't have to yeah, explain yeah. it. It's not you, it wasn't me. <laughs> Just so we're clear. There's a couple of the existing condition. Right, so uh, that would so, be yeah. much better. So on, on the left is is um, Dorset, you know, Dorset, whatever it's called now, point. Yeah, it's the point or something. Yeah. And, yeah. and the right is the, the assisted. Um, I can see it going much more so towards the uh, Ojaki and uh, um, special needs housing development, which we worked a lot on together. It's got a lot of different features to it. Does. it. That's I see us going that. Way. Yeah, I see it going that way. Blend in with the um, and then that's the, yeah. the the commercial piece. Yeah, the, the wood nice. look. Yeah, but I wouldn't get too bogged down with that. You'll we'll have plenty. No, I'm, not, I'm just like, saying, <laughs> bring some different cues yeah, into yeah, it yeah. because that's I agree. white. I agree. Clear from the road even so yeah. to bring in curls yeah. we were a little less concerned about that way in the back they were they're trying to come up with something that's a little different a little special it doesn't have to look like you know and per se you know hot metal street right. does. Not, um, and uh and we worked on that you know that they're, they're, that design's a little bit the cookie cutter no the one way up in the back the D &G. Oh, yeah, right. yeah exactly. you know, there's a lot of things going on there but yeah. it doesn't necessarily i don't think i built that here you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's nice that it's up there by itself and it'd be kind of interesting. But I understand down here on Hot Metal Street and everything, we want to try to bring in some of the. I hate to use the Simsbury look. I hate to use that kind of you know, terminology, but small town. We all know the small town look. Yeah. The nice, you know. That that would fit in better than other choices that have been presented by others out of late. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the name's not to be mentioned. That's where we are. Uh, again, I hope you, you know, for whatever uh, comments you have and whatever support you can lend, uh, we're going to the Zoning Commission later this evening for a little bit more preliminary discussion, and then hopefully they will set their public hearing, which will now be, I guess, in July because they're not meeting, uh, you know, very normal two times. So one, one other thought is um, some of the apartment buildings, is there any... Um, design option to have walkout apartments to their own private patio. That's pretty first, popular now first on the first floor. Course. Yeah, it's pretty popular. Probably. Because I, but my mother, she's not here anymore, but when she was here, she, she's like, if I get an apartment, I want to walk out my door and be on my own private patio yeah. on the first floor. And there's people that are going to turn certain ages, yes, me, someday wanting a one walkout, have my own space yeah. outside. A lot of the apartment buildings these days you walk in and that's the only way in your space. And it's nice to be able to walk outside and have your own space without having to go through a hall to get to the outside space. Yeah, I mean, the ones I'm, I'm we're actually working on one right now in Rocky Hill, it just happens to be 72 units. It's not these buildings, mm -hmm. you know, um, but that has that. Yeah, the it's, it's a nice option for six to eight units, yeah. you know, on the first floor, yeah. you know, with their own patios and then uh, deck patios up above. For those people that have the luxury now to be able to walk right outside, right away, and get on the ground, they want to continue to do that, but not own, you know, a big piece of property. So that's a that's an attractive oh, option for yeah, some. That's people. that's that's why these are so popular right now. Mm -hmm. Anka, do you have any comments or questions for that? Well, uh, yeah, as you know, I know. <laughs> I, I don't really like, I, I'm not into residential, residential and medical buildings, building everywhere. Uh, and I still believe that brick and mortar retail is not dead completely. It will probably come back to life maybe 10 years from now, but it will come back and obviously nobody can wait 10 years. So having said that, for this particular location of yours, I agree that residential in the back, it's I would say acceptable right. as a better option, as a better alternative. Uh, and on a, on a positive note, on, as a positive comment, I really like that. Uh, <laughs> 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 
the yeah. small one with yeah. the small kids, you aligned it it's parallel with root 10. Mm -hmm. That's great. I love it. And get some and, windows up here as well. And it yeah. kind of it, it belongs to the street, to the main road, instead of being awkwardly twisted just to align with the development. Uh, yeah, so having said that, I, I, I don't know. I, I wish more retail commercial stuff gets built, but yeah, you're right. A lot of it is just empty these days, and you need to develop and have it leased or, yeah, so. Okay. Great. Elaine, questions and comments? Um, no, I'm glad you are still including retail kind of in the plan. We have in the not so recent past kind of bristled at converting a mixed use development to all apartments. Yeah. So I'm glad there's still that kind of commercial, which I think Anko, you know, was kind of getting at there. Um, we really don't have any design stuff to talk about yet. I Steve gave me some <laughs> starter pro tips, orders on signs. Native sandstone, um, but we look forward to seeing your elevations. Thank you. Enjoy. I agree. I mean, it's a nice complex. I've been through it. Um, I toured the, the existing complex at one point. So looking forward to you know seeing the housing units developed. And I agree about the, the mixed space. It's, yeah, I mean, even if, even if we don't like all white buildings, they are beautifully maintained, you know, so like landscaping and everything. So. They are. They are. Yeah. Although white's not really popular. <laughs> and one other thing is just some, um, I'm trying to think of how to articulate it. I, I don't want to say a statue, but some centerpiece that, you oh, know, yeah. gives us something for that. Northern village area that brings it to the community as a, a nuance. Perhaps a 30 foot for giraffe. You have one of those already. It's 17 foot. It's some of the PF Chang horses out there. Or something like that. Um, George, where do we go? Don't you don't, 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 don't need a motion. These, these, these will be passed on to the Zoning Commission and the applicant. You don't need to, to make a vote or take money. Well, we appreciate yeah, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I seven. appreciate your comments now because. To be honest with you, I, I was thinking of mostly the same thing you're you're saying because I know. Well, I don't know about the giraffe. <laughs> like I said, it might be a P.F. Chang horse or something. But uh, uh, but I mean, as far as the building design goes, those that's the kind of things I'm communicating back to. You know, please, because you know, we'll try to do this maybe in one and a half times, not <laughs> in, not in five times or something like that. So, thank you very much. Well, thank you again. Yeah, thanks, we appreciate right. your time thank and you. efforts. With that being said, let's move right along to application ZC 23-24 Pros Prospect Enterprises LLC owner Paul Vitiliano, I'm so sorry, a BHB applicant for 11,600 square foot retail building, a 2,400 square foot restaurant, a 2,325 square foot restaurant, and a drive up ATM at 1263 Hot Meadow Street. Better known locally as the previous Wagner Ford building, it's a B2 zone. Who would like to present on behalf of the applicant? Step up, step right up. <laughs> Vitaliano, by the way, is our engineer, so he's glad that you just needed the property. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I'm Greg Nanny with uh, Prospect Enterprises for the management and development agent for the owner, 1285 Hop Meadow Street. Um, and we're here tonight to present on 1285 Hop Meadow uh, a planned redevelopment of the project, which would include demolition of all the existing buildings on the site and uh, construction of three new buildings and a uh, proposed drive drive up ATM. Uh, in the front of the uh, site, we're proposing both a Starbucks and a Chipotle drive-in restaurant. And then in the rear half of the property, uh, a retail building of approximately 12,000 square feet. We have not yet identified our tenants for that space. So it's just a proposed spec space. 
So I mentioned Paul Vitaliano. He is our engineer from PHP Engineers, and Mike Barago and uh, Doug Gruner from uh, PKA Architects. Uh, we've worked together as a team on a number of projects uh, in the past and uh, we're back together again on this one. And uh, Paul would uh, begin the presentation. So just while we're changing people at one point, it wasn't me, it was on the report. <laughs> I, didn't catch it. I just read what's in front of me. Whatever it says, it comes out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, my apologies. Hi, once again, my name is Paul Vitaliano from DHB. I'm a site civil engineer in Georgia's defense. It does say applicant next to my name. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Just not here. It is totally fine. I do I do thank staff for their their help through this process. Well, no, let's yeah. stick on this because it says prospect enterprises, but well. <laughs> owner. Continue on. Oh, I apologize. Oh. <laughs> Learn about functions yeah, after yeah. the meeting, Stephen. All right. So oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. So no, thank you. Um, so very quickly, I just want to walk you through the site. I know I'm sure everyone's really wants to talk about the architecture, and we have two architects here that are dying to talk about it too. So um the Wagner Ford site, I'm sure everyone's familiar with it. Yeah, this is our proposed plan, big wise, the building on the right. Um, the Dunkin' Donuts on the bottom left. Um, international skating rink is kind of to the top right. So um, I'm sure everyone's familiar with that. Yep, thank you. So what we're proposing, as Greg said, is a Starbucks, which is what you see on the left, um, bottom left, a Chipotle on the bottom right, and the um, 11,600 square foot retail building um, at the top. And the drive up ATM is kind of in the middle right. Um, you can kind of see the, the car is drawn there and that little island stick out right there. Thank you. Um, so basically from a site plan standpoint, we're consolidating the curb cuts that are there now to have one central full access in right out driveway, which you see at the center of the property, the property is outlined in blue. Um, we are gonna utilize the traffic signal for the big Y plaza. There is a shared access agreement um, midway through the site. You can see that our driveway lines up the front of their building. So basically two access points um, to share that. Just looking at each building individually, the, the Starbucks at the bottom left, for example, um, has two entry points. There's the one, the one point, or, I would, yeah, sure. sure. It's the middle one. Yeah. So this here is the entry into the parking area. And then up here is an entry for the drive through which is around this way. Um, so we separated the two. Um, the Chipotle, you would come in and you could enter here, go around it here, there is a, an exit right there. And the Chipotle is um, a, an app order type restaurant. It's not gonna be where you're, you're getting in the queue and ordering your food there. You're ordering ahead and you're going there and the app's gonna tell you when you're ready. And that's when you basically get in line to pick up your order. So you don't eat in. You could eat in, you could. Okay. But the drive-through, we don't really like calling it a drive-through window because it's an app pickup service. Okay. That's why the queue length isn't as long. I was gonna say, as, it's really hard to order a Chipotle in a conventional drive-through. <laughs> right. Right, so that, that's why that drive through is shorter. And this is um, kind of new to the area, but a tested model for them corporately. Um, Starbucks, obviously a different animal. It does it does need a drive through um, queue, which is what you see here. It actually splits here to have a double. Um, and, you know, in working with staff and working with the town, we've been looking at this for over a year. Um, we separated those drive throughs We kind of made sure there's enough stacking distance, enough separation from the driveway. So this, this plan is kind of a ball. Um, to this this setup, uh, the main drive at the middle of the site, like I said, you can enter here, you can enter down here, or you can come around here to go up to the retail or to the drive through. This is because there is a grade change here. Um, currently, this this top portion of the site, um, I shouldn't. Currently, it's probably over ten feet higher than the front. Um, we're going to be about six feet higher at the end of the day, and that's why we've done that to basically follow grade um, along those lines. Too, there's a sidewalk network. I know that the the town is extending the sidewalk along the frontage, closing this gap as part of the program that's going on now. Um, we're gonna pick up on that and extend the sidewalk into the site. Um, basically the cross here to Starbucks, continue up and around to the retail here. And because of the grade change, we, we actually have to have a separate sidewalk for Chipotle. So their connection is on this side and they come across here. Um, so everybody's, everybody's connected that way. Um, 
I don't know if that's too little or too much about site for this board. Um, I got a quick question. To take questions, sure. The bottom left corner is that a water feature or is that just yeah? I was possible by chance. Nope, it, it is. Uh, this right here is a rain garden. Um, so we introduced a rain garden here. Um, basically, it, we are decreasing impervious on the site, and we have a couple of you know we have some regulations to follow and. Um, some guidelines that we're trying to basically enhance the water quality here. Um, so we do have a couple of underground infiltration systems because we have nice sands on the site. Um, and then in this area, we thought it'd be, um, it'd be nice and it worked out to have a rain garden out there in the front. What's a rain garden? So a rain garden is not a detention pond. It's a smaller, like one foot to two foot deep, um, still pond, if you will. Um, the reason it's called a rain garden is because it's smaller than a typical detention pond, so it's something that would be dry typically. Oh, so it fills when it gets it fills when it rains, but it's planted in a manner that um, is is subtle, I guess, is, is probably the right word. It's not a detention pond with a fence around it and meant to get six feet of water and, and drain. Um, it's really meant to be one or two feet. You plant it a certain way and it, and it dries out quickly, but it's a way to uh, promote infiltration and enhance water quality. I like all the trees. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you. So, um, yeah, the landscaping, obviously, um, we place did, hasn't seen trees in seven years. So. It hasn't. We are we are going to add the trees. There's still some debate about the ones in the front. I do want to um, point that out, that the um, the tenants want to work with us on species selection, make sure they don't block their views. Right now, we're trying to maintain what's in the sidewalk enhancement program, um, but we might revisit those as far as, as, far as species. We use a lot of crab apples in that area, just with a few to neighboring properties. Part of what we do, as I just said earlier, is we try to have a cohesive neighborhood um, with continuity amongst properties. And now it was back in the day, actually, at Wagner Ford, they did have crab apples. They all died um, or were cut down, maybe. But they were planted right over the oil tank. <laughs> Perished for many years. But, um, you know, it used to be. In the old days, sort of like we had the Sycamores downtown when you went up to the Hoskins area of town, it was just street side uh, crab apples, which is being redeveloped some of the properties to the south. Um, I don't know who owns those, yeah, <laughs> but those are all crab apples. They're coming back and they're also less blocking for the retail, which obviously yeah, wants. Don't get too tall. Yeah, they don't get tall, they don't get too wide. It's almost a dwarf tree when it's said and done. Okay, I made a note of that. I'll talk to my last goodbye. Exactly. And sugar maples are something to try to stay away from. From the, the foliage is incredibly wonderful, but something that sheds less leaves is something we've been trying to uh, push towards. Okay. Um, so, would you like to see the architecture here from architects or? Sure. Yeah. Hang on. I, keep, I think we're saying hang on for the slide. <laughs> now you put, wait, sit. <laughs> Get up. The picture of parliamentary decorum. <laughs> wait, we're party shirt. Did <laughs> I drink? <laughs> this is uh, what you guys gave me, and this is the order it's in. Could you actually scroll down uh, three more slides? Actually, if I stop right there, uh, thank you, Paul. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Doug Bruner. I'm with BKA Architects. We're the architect of record for the project. And with me is Michael Barago, who is here to answer any operational questions for Chipotle as well as Starbucks. I'm going to start at this. This is actually an aerial view of the site uh, showing the hierarchy of the buildings. So the building in the background is actually poised six, seven feet higher, as Mr. Vitaliano indicated. And it's designed to supplement the two buildings architecturally wise, uh, as shown on the uh, left and the right, which is the Starbucks and the Chipotle. Um, the proportions of the building are pretty much 50-50 on the two uh, front retails. Uh, the um, bottom portion has a lot of the harder materials, which is you know either brick or metal or glass or whatnot. Um, but the signage bands are pretty much proportional to the bottom. And the building in the rear is also the same proportions. Um, we've increased the signage band in the middle there just to kind of give it a little bit more emphasis. 
And it's kind of hard to see here. Let me actually go back a couple more slides. Uh, I'm almost done. That's perfect. Thank you. Uh, so you can actually see the proportionality here too. So right now the building is designed for multiple tenants, but as we don't have tenants determined yet or the number of tenants, this building can be scaled for one, two, three, four tenants, basically using the different materials and the planes and whatnot. Um, the colors shown are basically shown to be um, more of a, um, a naturalistic tone, uh, a lot of woods, uh, some uh, soft grays could either be cementitious or metal panels or whatnot. Uh, the facade is broken up by uh, some vertical planes through these canopies, which are actually also shown on the, um, the Starbucks as well as the Chipotle. And then also these angled awnings too, to kind of give it more of a brick to the uh, Materiality does go all the way down to the base. Uh, so pretty much continuous material throughout, um, no break in that. Uh, the breaks are actually done through the, uh, the verticals um, as well as the projections and the fenestration as well. So, scroll down a little bit, please. Here, you can kind of give them a little more side of the proportions. So, it's probably 50 50 glass, 50 50 signage fan. Uh, a little bit more on the freeze up here, too, to give you a little bit more signage. If it is intended to be a one or two tenant person, uh, parcel, then uh, you know, you're going to have areas that they can. Uh, concentrate the signage and whatnot. Can you scroll down a little bit? We'll see the other side of the building. Uh, schematically, here we have shown uh, wall sconces that basically just do wall washings on the ground. So it's not intended to be uplit. It's basically just to basically accentuate the side of the building as well as the sidewalk below. Building is also capped with this uh, decorative cornice, proportionally. Uh, I think it's probably quarter to three quarters. So the fascia up on the projection. That's attended what it's supposed to be. Thank you, scroll one more down, please. Uh, these are the elevations, um, and uh, they don't do the renderings justice. Can you scroll one more down, please? And now we're arriving at the Starbucks. So the Starbucks, as I said, has a layered system. So basically it has the harder materials on the bottom, which is the aluminum storefront, the glass, as well as brick. Uh, the top is complemented by a, a burnt wood. Always, Mike, can you help me with the name there? Uh, Shugiban. So Shugiban. Basically it's a, a natural preservative through the burning process. So it actually helps to uh, seal the wood from weather, but it also gives it a nice, a texture um, look to it. Um, the glass is capped by this uh, this rectilinear um, awning. Uh, it's basically just a plane projected into it. And the theme for both buildings is basically uh, visibility from either the patrons out, inside out and uh, visibility outside in uh, on both sides. So that way you, way you have um, surrounding uh, glazing on both sides, basically kind of give you a nice look into the buildings. Um, over Can here- Back up one sec. Did you say it was brick that um, sort of beigey, like gray color? Up here? Yep. Oh, I know, I didn't specify the material. It's going to either be a textured, uh, smooth material, um, cementitious, or possibly a driver or something like that. Okay. And then you also have these sconces here too, which is pretty much what's on the, the main retail building. Uh, over here is an additional seating area. So there's two entries into the building, uh, one from the seating area, which is the secondary entrance. And then this is the primary entrance facing the party line. Uh, the signage shown is graphical. It's gonna be submitted under a separate permit by the tenant. And uh, their intention is to meet the zoning guidelines. So one uh, this is the rear of the Starbucks. So the Starbucks is internally drained and there's a parapet, continuous parapet around there to actually act as your screening for your rooftop. So you won't see any rooftop equipment at all. What's the parapet? The parapet is the top here. So basically the roof line is kind of where these It's like a wall. Oh, it's okay. Like, it's Thank like you. Wall. Yeah, it's I have done a Yeah. Uh, one more 
And now we get to the Chipotle, right? So it's the same thing. So it has basically surrounding glass, uh, with, uh, hard materials, brick on the bottom, aluminum storefront, as well as the seating area out front. And I believe uh, this is the secondary entrance as well, too. Uh, this actually does have some roof articulation uh, through the drive through, which is actually intended to be a separate element. Uh, it's either going to be cementitious, vertical cementitious, or horizontal cementitious material. And uh, the banding on top as well, too, it's either going to be um, a texture cementitious or a, um, a dry material. And I think I've covered both buildings. So I welcome any questions you might have. Oh, I'm sorry. There's another picture of the, uh, the patio there. And then the main entrance is over. Mike, can you help me out? Is this the uh, front corner right there that that person is saying that would be the front entrance? That would be the front entrance. And then the side entrance where he initially indicated would be a, a side exit from the dining area to the parking. Perfect. And then the elevation is showing which is what I kind of give you a sense of the colors too. So the movie color scheme is pretty much a, it's black and white. Um, tones through for the Chipotle as well as the Starbucks, which is the proprietary look. And the building in the back is designed to supplement those colors based on your natural tones. I have a question and a comment. Sure. The question is, are these um, Starbucks and the Chipotle, are those industry recommendations on colors and schemes? Of sign, uh, not sign. Um, the, the colors and the textures. I'm, I don't even know. Yeah, that's correct. Correct. It's a proprietary. So, do they balk at changes to that? Uh, they're welcome to listen to changes. Because I'm going to steal from Stephen. It's all very attractive. It's going to look way better than what we got there right now. But I want to steal from Stephen the thought of incorporating. Sandstone and other local um, attributes to kind of have a cohesive look on Hot Meadow Street. I, I, I see the, I understand from the glass and all that, but just some of the colors, if you want to look at the building we're in right now and maybe build some of that aspect to, to what you have um, um, on these properties. Okay. Anka, How was that? Uh, <laughs> that was actually well articulated. Thank you. Uh, Anka, when you're ready. <laughs> uh, so, first of all, I'm, I'm sure uh, you'll come again, right? Uh, this is just uh, the first presentation, correct? Right? They're, they're not scheduled for a public meeting. So, I'm commissioned until the 21st. Okay. We'll certainly be back with you. Okay. So, in terms of, of, of uh, Specifying the finishes that's coming next. It's, this is just a very first presentation, right? Correct. Okay. I mean, next time we'll come I'm very more. glad that something hopefully will get built on this uh, piece of property. That will be fantastic. I'm very glad you're looking at retail. Again, it's first, I mean, commercial, you know, that's fantastic. Uh, having said all this, don't, don't mind me. I, I don't have my phone. I couldn't Google your company. Where are you located? Brockton, Massachusetts. Ah, okay. So not very far. New, New England. Okay. Yeah, New England. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Good, 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 good. Now, uh, again, uh, I try to refrain from saying, gosh, make it more uh, New England, more, seems very more suburban looking. Uh, I should embrace uh, contemporary modern structures and architecture. Excellent. So having said that, my suggestion would be, uh, first of all, take a look at um, the entire the, the, the neighborhood. If you can present to us next time, um, an elevation, you know, of, of also the, the adjacent properties, mm -hmm. uh, how, how the building left right look like. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, you can tell us, gosh, you live here, guys, we can drive back and forth. But no, no, no. In this context of having everything formally on paper and presented to us, show us like what's on uh, across the street, uh, and, and again, left and right, so we get a better understanding on how this 
very beautifully designed <coughs> contemporary structure will fit in the neighborhood. And the other suggestion that I would have is considering the weather and considering how much uh, people, at least people like me, would love to have a cup of coffee at Starbucks outside or eat at Chipotle outside. I would suggest that you design into the building, the, I mean, the, the building design to have uh, canopies and, and covered seated areas. For the whole Yeah, I mean, don't rely, make it like, you know, more like a three three season kind Even of Even like, a, like a trellis or something like that? Exactly, exactly. Like porch canopy, something like permanently covered areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the term. Permanently covered areas. Uh, people, I'm sure, would enjoy that very much, I think. And uh, because it's a, it's a nice area, you know, and you have a lot of space there with some, some nice landscaping. Mm -hmm. That would be mm -hmm. fantastic. And, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, not, not just umbrellas, you know. Um, and maybe um, that will help. Pergola, yeah. yeah. And maybe that will help. Soften it? Soften it, mm -hmm. yes. Thank Sorry you. to put words in your mouth. No, that's perfect. Soften. Other than that, uh, as I said, I, I very much embrace the whole concept, and it's great, and you're doing a fantastic job. And I'm looking forward to see the next phase in your design. Thank you. Um, I would just kind of echo part of what both Polly and Anka said about kind of pulling some of our local elements of continuity that we have through town into the design. You know, this is obviously like modern chain retail that Simsbury doesn't have a lot of, um, but we do have that continuity. The sandstone is the most, you know, brings it right to mind. I think Big Y did a great job uh, with their entryway kind of pulling that in, even though it's a pretty recent construction, modern building, but, you know, if you're going to have a monument sign, for example, or even just the entryway, incorporating some of that native stone and some of those design elements could kind of make it cohesive while still keeping this kind of really sleek kind of current design that I know the branding for the two companies is means that way. And, you know, it, it is adaptable and you know, outside of our purview, I can't believe how many coffee shops Simsbury can hold, but I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> but we have a Starbucks. We have a Starbucks. There's another Starbucks right up in Granby, but then we also have Coffee Spot and Lion's Den and Dunks, Dunks right next door and another Dunks at the other end of town. We're caffeinated people. We can be very I know. Oh, we don't plan out the, uh, the drive through situation up at the north end of town. That's all. All right, Jolene. I agree with the sandstone. Just think it's a great idea to incorporate that. Um, we talked a little bit at the beginning about the landscaping, and I wondered if you, you know, in considering the landscaping, are you looking at using mostly natural species that are, um, you know, in this area? Native. 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 That was the word. Natural. Or you do plastic plants. Which I think Mr. Vitaliano would be best yeah. to speak to that. Yeah. So um, we do look at native species, obviously. Um, so there is there is a list in the in the packet. I'm sorry, I don't have it on the on the chart, but we can certainly you do have it in the submission if you wanted to look through the the species that, that are there and make any suggestions on that. So just grab that whole. Yeah, I think we like to see that. Yeah, it's not just possible. Because your growing had a whole lot of trees. Yeah, this isn't within. This isn't as representative. Yeah. The plant, the so plant you saw. If, when, sorry, when you redo the pictures, <laughs> with some of these ideas may be incorporated. If you show what you intend to have the trees look like, that would get a bigger under, better understanding of the whole view at that. Once the, that's all appropriate. There is a landscaping plan in the Dropbox menu that has it. I am arguing with Dropbox right now, trying to look at it. Um, yeah. So it's not easy, but I do see it in the list of plants and kind of placement, right. and it is not as denuded. I think once right. we see an elevation, maybe with some of the landscaping included, that kind of very jarring contemporary look won't be as jarring. Great. Right. If, you, if you'd like to, usually I have that printed out. Um, I have an issue today where I can do that. I could find it while we're talking and read you the species that we're proposing. I, I can say I'm looking at the list okay, right great. now, actually, and I do see a lot of native 
yeah, species on there. Too. So, Thank you. oh, there's the crab apple. Okay, we already have it. Good. <laughs> so the ATM building is just going to be a standalone, you know, like Bank of America or some kind of bank that's just going to be its drive up ATM and with no yeah. teller system, all that. It, it is a chase as the, the chase. The, uh, it doesn't really matter, but it's somebody like that. Well, it does have, we say that because it does have their, I'll, I'll use the word prototypical. They do have like a stand, obviously, and like an over, a little overhang. There is not a person there. We just were asking that. Yeah. Um, it is strictly a drive up ATM, but they do have a, a typical structure that they use. And the reason to have that is do we need an ATM when people aren't really using cash anymore? Chase believes that you do. Chase wants to give us cash. Right. I want cash out there. I do want cash too, but, but I can get cash out there. It's actually, it's actually, it's the only, there, there, yeah, there are no banks up at that there. end of the town. So I, I'm just asking them. The, the, the standalone ATM, <laughs> the standalone ATM thing I'll call it is something that in the last few years, I know Greg and myself have seen a lot of. Um, there's one in West Hartford, we just had one. Um, okay. I just did one in Bristol. Um, because like you said, traditional banking is different, yep. but they're finding the ATM is still something, a way to- People are still using it. Okay, that's right. great. So, I just, I'm just, yeah. and it's not I've never seen it before, so that's- So, so, it, so um, Bristol, West Hartford to, to look at, and it's actually Bank of America is doing a lot of it as well. Well, if you've got a, a standard that they're mm -hmm. using, I don't think that's in the package. We we asked that would be helpful. Yeah, picture of what that looked yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Five minutes. You know, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. By all means. As far as the material, I want to point out the material we're looking at. At least at Starbucks has a sand pebble fine sandstone finish, and the color is pretty similar to what the sandstone is. Almost. I'll bring a suggestion um, because the large retail building in Pat is actually higher prominence and it's actually drawing you into the site. Maybe we can explore doing the materiality of the sandstone on that finish instead. You know, maybe doing a base instead. I would go instead of changing the two. I'm not following you. So you said it's on the it's on the Starbucks building? Yeah, that, that tannish finish. Is a no, sandstone. That's not sandstone. Yeah, it's that's not, not our name. We have sandstone. we have red sand. Our red, red like sandstone. Yeah, so oh, if, if, you, if you yeah. look at the building, building this building, building when you go outside, it's a red. Yeah, sand. I know what you're talking about. Like a lighter this, sandstone. This is a red. Yeah, so I don't even uh, know okay. if sandstone the right. Well, I think yes. people are people it's call it sandstone. They call it redstone. Yeah, it's, it, it was they're, native they're, quarry here in San Boston and New York. Red. Is it the site on the shoes in the South Station though? Uh, this building is made yeah, out of the this building, yeah. 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 So okay. it's not yeah. sand colored, it's red. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sorry. <laughs> and, and secondly, the suggestion with the pergola, I, I, it's a great suggestion. I must caution it though, because of the vehicular traffic around there, not, it might actually be an impediment to traffic, especially in the winter when they're clearing the snow. Construction might actually get hit and cause quite a bit of damage. That's kind of why they actually do this as transitional. So basically, it's easier to set up and easier to maintain, essentially. Even if it's um, oh. like in the, the, what do you call it, the berm or whatever you call the curve? Well, the curve is only six inches, but if you have a snowplow coming through here, um, even if it's set back about 18 to 20 inches, there is a possibility. You can just go on the We need those bullet things. The what are those things called? Them? Bollards. 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 That's that's a, a level of protection. But I mean, that, there's, there's, there's a possibility. There's a possibility that's natural because those umbrellas always break. They do. But if something built uh, into the building, even if it's like you know, maybe a, um, a wider canopy or something. Yes. I would just caution you know, putting structural elements as close yeah. to the road. Okay. And, well, that's all. Things we can review in the future. We're starting to bot cop again zoning. Yeah. Are you yeah. guys going to zoning tonight? Not tonight. Not tonight. Oh, all right. That's right. We tried to talk them. Um I myself have go ahead. What were you gonna say? Can I just say that I, the, the thought of the uh, of the brownstone. I mean, I think of Simsbury and think of, you know, I, I'm not sure if Benson Bigford is actually it's in Simsbury yeah, yet. It's in Avon too. Yeah. The police station in exactly. I guess that's yes. in Avon, but but here I mean that's uh, 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 
such a such a uh, ubiquitous or uh, I got pro it. prominent element of uh, um, uh, construction of this town. I think it's a great idea, and I like the way Big Y did that, and I can see us trying to incorporate that into our site and uh, you know giving some cohesiveness to that boulevard that that we share. Uh, accessing our site. So I really appreciate that suggestion. I'm almost embarrassed that we didn't hear it ourselves, but uh, we'll come back with something that- uh, We appreciate that. that. Yeah, thank you. It can be cost prohibitive somewhat. So even if you yeah. architecturally incorporate into the landscape, and that's what Big Y did. Initially, I believe we had asked Big Y to like build it out of redstone or whatever. <laughs> or even or if use paint, paint the color of the, of the sandstone. Well, they, yeah, the they-, they uh, they picked up on the hue yeah, and, and yeah. carried it into the building. So thank you. We appreciate your uh, willingness yeah. to consider that. Well, we're a, we're a big wide landlord uh, in other locations, not this location, yeah. um, but uh, in one in particular that Paul and I worked on, uh, there's a boulevard access to that too with a, with a bank and an office building across the street. And there was a lot of field stone in the area, so we did some field stone on both sides. So I think we can at least try to match what what big one. That would be great. Greatly, greatly appreciated. You know, I'm not sure. With I, I hope I'm not um, giving Paul heartburn. He's my <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't know how the topography works. For the big Y is a little more elevated off of the street than we are, but. But again, we'll figure out some way to incorporate at least a taste of that in there so that um, it looks point. like sensory. Thank, Thank you. you. So no white platform? No, I'm just kidding. It was just a joke. <laughs> we have a, a sufficient amount in the Oscar area of that. Yeah. Um, last comments or questions for the applicant before we move on? All set. All right. Well, thank Before you so much. The We're excited yeah. to work with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving along, we go straight to approval of minutes for the May 15th, 2023 regular meeting. Has everyone that was available review the minutes? I did not. I did, and I thought they were in order. I uh, believe also we found out as a as a procedure, you don't have to be there to vote for the minutes. Isn't that how? <laughs> no, no, oh no, I was there. Oh, I didn't hear that. We may vote. <laughs> any there. any member may vote for the minutes at any time. Okay. I move we accept the minutes as submitted. Second. All those in favor, aye. aye. I trust Stephen. Aye. I wouldn't go that far, but sure, that's <laughs> unanimous. Um, thank you, Polly, for that vote of confidence. In general commission business, um, is there any general commission? The, the only thing I meant, just an announcement, the, the, the planning commission will be hosting its second public hearing on the draft plan of conservation and development. That will be Tuesday, June 27th. 7 p.m. at the library. All, of course, are invited, and I'm sure you'll get a little flyer from, from, from department staff. Okay. Um, one other general commission business. What? Well, staff shares your concerns. That's uh, not, well, the to, to, are these not in the minutes. Something. By zoning during their meeting, because mine is alarmingly low on battery use. So. <laughs> mine, mine's gone. That's, we're that's, struggling a little bit with these machines. Yeah, we should requisition um, or however we do it. Yeah. We are more than happy to provide that um, that gesture if we can. And who do we ask for a bigger screen and a more responsive? Um, yeah, responsive and better quality product to be quite frank. You don't need to do anything specific. I, I, He's I, aware. I, I'm aware. We are aware. <laughs> And the last thing, just general commission business, because he's our guy now. Poor guy got stuck with our commission. He's the guy. It's good. It's no, it's guy. I actually yeah. like it because I like the continuity of being here and then on to the yeah. other commission. Well, so I hear it actually makes sense. Continuity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the there has been a significant lack of late of any applicant bringing any sample in any manner whatsoever, including accurate. Uh, color tones for us to look at, even a little chip 
and we we're literally going off of this screen. And I gotta be honest. The, this is why we came back in person. Yes, yeah, we, 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 right. we should have board staff and demand boards to the best of yeah. our ability. Yes, please. And I hope those guys yeah. on their way out looked at the building. I suspect they to see what color yeah. this building is. Said it, said it a few times. Yeah, <laughs> we, should have, we should have color chips. We should have more. Um, yeah, just, we just uh, need to reiterate. Yeah, yeah. reiterate and then if we could have some beverages. No, I'm just kidding. And on that note, I would like to speak on behalf of government. Okay, we have a motion. To, no, thank you for acknowledging. Hold on. I will not be here on that Sunday, as I mentioned. Right, but George, I got consensus from everybody that. That the, 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 the 21st, 21st right? was okay to have a special meeting. Right. Yes. It wasn't on the original calendar. What so room you, are we yeah. in here? We'll be right here. Okay. And we appear to have a quorum yeah. for that. It sounds, sounds like we need. Yeah, yeah. Just um, to make sure because I know it's for the meeting. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Again, this yeah, yeah, especially with the, you know, to say the seasonal shutdown in August. Yes. Yeah, right. Um, Elaine had made a motion to adjourn. Does that still stand? It absolutely does. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thanks, everyone, for your time. <laughs>